Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Yarn and Pajamas. Today is crochet podcast number 51. So before I start with the podcast today, I just want to um, touch a little bit on the flooding that was in Eastern Kentucky. Sorry, I had to get my water. So the area that flooded is where I was born and raised. I was born and raised in Knott County, and it seems like Knott County, Perry County, Letcher County, Floyd County were the hardest hit, so like pretty much the LK, LP area. Um, thank the Lord, my family was safe. Um, it was a little hairy for my dad and my youngest brother and his family. They had quite the story to tell after it was all over with. My oldest brother, um, his house is on a higher elevation, pretty much on the side of a mountain. So, but um, his roads were pretty bad. My uncles all fared well, but um, I was woke up, what morning was it? Wednesday morning and um, my sister had called and um, it was, quite early and she's you know just wanted to say you know tell me about the floods before I got like woke up and got on Facebook or whatever um to just warn me and that they hadn't spoken to my dad since um early that morning about like two or three o'clock and that um the cell towers were down so I was pretty worried throughout you know the day about my dad but he finally called me later that evening and let me know that you know they made it through and stuff so if you are the praying type please send a prayer up for these families um i mean it's just devastating the pictures that you know i've seen on facebook the pictures that my family sent me i mean it is just i've never seen anything like that in all of the time that I've ever lived down there. I mean, I've seen it flood and seen the creeks get up, but I've never seen floods like this. Um, and one more um, prayer request. I've read a lot of news articles about um, the floods. And you know, when you get to the bottom of the page, there's that comment section. And so, you know, I've read some of the comments and we need to pray for some people because the devil has his fist wrapped right around their hearts. Some of the comments that I've seen about how um, Eastern Kentucky, the people that live there deserve this and that um, it was because they voted this way or voted that way and they shouldn't receive any help. And it's just mean and hateful comments. And, you know, people lost their lives. Um, babies were ripped from their parents' arms in these raging floodwaters and people are saying these mean and nasty things just, you know, about they're just a bunch of hillbillies. They don't, you know, deserve to live basically. So I think we need to pray for these people leaving these comments too because the devil is at play in their life. And if you don't pray, if that's not something you do, then just sending positive vibes and like bright light energy towards the people of Eastern Kentucky and the people with the evil wrapped around their heart, just, you know, bombard them with, you know, good thoughts and stuff. So that's all I'll um, say about that. I am, thank the Lord that my family is okay. Now, uh, let's get started into the podcast. I do have my AC on. It is quite hot up here. My hair has been bothering me all day. It's like sticking to the back of my neck, but it's like, I'm just going to put it up. Um, okay, so last week, my um, nephew was here. I did not get a lot of crocheting done. I will just tell you that right now. I just about took a drink of old water. <laughs> Here's my new water. I bet that old water probably tastes bad. Okay, so my nephew was here last week. Not a lot of crocheting happened. We did a lot of running around. 
I took him to the Air Force Base Museum here in um, Indiana and in Grissom, Indi the Grissom Air Force Base in Peru, Indiana. He really liked that. Um, so that was a little bit of ways away. And then, you know, we went out to eat every night. And so driving, you know, back and forth to the city. And it was like, I was just killed out and like stuffed full from all that good eating. So not a lot happened, but I can report that I did finish Marty's body. So his body is all closed up and I don't know how, but my stitches are like humongous. Look at those. I just, I don't know like what was going on. Now I was using a 2.5 millimeter hook on him and I'm using um, um, this kind of yarn. It's the the sweet minis from Yarn Bee. I mean, it's not thick at all. I don't know if like, I must not be a tight crocheter, I guess. I don't know, but I had some holy bits down there, so I'm glad it's on the bottom. And I did finish an ear. So I have barely any orange left and I'm hoping to get his mouth done in orange. I don't know. I have to assess that situation, but I decided I'm trying to get it up there like so that you guys can see it. That looks about right. I decided to do his ears and he's got a tail in grain. I'm going to do those in grain and then I'm going to take this mini right here, these minis, and I am definitely using the blue out of it and possibly the purple. So I was thinking maybe doing the hat in blue and then doing his arms and legs in purple. So, so I did get that much of Marty finished and I did not work on the unicorn at all. He is in a bag still over there. I didn't even take him downstairs. But I did start a new project because if I had something tiny, I can work on it in the restaurants while we were waiting for, you know, our food and all of that stuff. But I didn't want to take big, massive balls of yarn. So just, you know, some little balls of yarn. So I looked through and looked through and I wanted to start working on some like a little Halloween projects. And I found this um, on Etsy. It's a paid for pattern. Oh, and Marty the Party Monster. He comes out of a book. It's called Amigurumi Monsters 2. And I'll put a link for the Amazon book for it down below if anybody's interested. But um, I purchased the Death's, Death's Head Hawk Moth. And the pattern is, and I hope I say this right, but it's Layli Lala, Layli Lala. And I believe that she has a book that's like moths and bugs and like beetles and stuff like that. And I bought this off of her wet, wetsy, Etsy store. And yeah, so here is what I've got. It's living in. This is a um, Notions pouch by No Catchy Name. And I do have all of my yarn and my hook down in here that I'm using. So I'm not very far in it. Let me lay this. I, I moved you guys a little. I was hoping I wouldn't. Let me turn it inside out. I think I'm at the part in the pattern to decrease for the head. So here's what I've got done. Just the top of its little head. And I looked through and grabbed some cutie pies of all of these colors. Now in her pattern, she does have like what colors of Katona cotton correspond to the colors that she's talking about. And I believe number 505 is linen. So I'm using Katona cotton by Shep Yace in linen. And this is the 10 gram cutie pies. All of them are, well, except for, uh, and I'll show you. So we have this other color that I will be using. This is old lace. It's like a nice creamy white. We have this one. It's like a brown. It's called Moon Rock. 
this blue is 247 I think it is called Bluebird. Let's see. 247 all the way up here with my mangoes. 247 Bluebird. Bluebird. Did I say Bluebird or did I say Bluebell? I can't remember now, but it's Bluebird. Um, this one is a yellow gold. I hope we don't have to have the whole 10 gram because this is in a whole 10 gram. And then I didn't have a 10 gram ball of black, so I made myself one. So I just uh, kept wrapping it around a, um, what are those things called? They look like a wand, Nasta Penne. I have like a mini Nasta Penne. And I just kept wrapping it around and I'd go weigh it. Um, and I knew that my Nasta Penne was 15 grams. So I weighed it until it got to like, I think I stopped at like 23 grams. But I figured I probably won't need the whole 10 grams anyways. So all of the colors all fit nice and neat down in this little bag, along with a 2.2 millimeter hook. And I was able to just throw this down in my purse and go. And I thought I would get a lot more done on it than I did, but the food came like super quick, so which is a good thing, right? So that's all I've been working on. Um, I do, so I have no more finished objects. So we'll talk about like upcoming, like my plans for crochet this week is to work on Marty the Potter. I cannot speak today, I'm trying. Marty the Party Monster. Um, my nephew's birthday is the 12th so I have everything else for his birthday box except for the amigurumi so I just really need to get that done and maybe fingers crossed I may be able to get one out on time this year um, his box is just a hodgepodge of things like generally I have like a nice little theme that runs through the box so like um, Kaylin's was axolotls you know, remember I done the watermelon axolotl and then I like found as many things as I could that was axolotl related. And then, um, no, that was Kinley's box. Kaylin's box was elephant and dandelion themed. So I found as many things as I could, elephant related and dandelion related and sent to Kaylin. Kinley, was the axolotl Kaylin was the elephants um so cam likes all kinds of animals so his box is just a wide variety he is the youngest of the three so i feel like the younger ones um you can just put like a lot of little things in there and they really like that like just like a just a big jumble of them so but he's getting older and pretty soon I will have to be more selective on his box too. Okay, so I do have some show and tales this week and I'm super excited to show them off. And I wrote everybody down here on a little list on my talk about list so I wouldn't miss anybody. So uh, first we're gonna look at some of Sheila's stuff that she made. Now Sheila has been working on some towel toppers and I have a few different pictures here of her towel toppers. And look at those. I just love towel toppers. And I remember, was it a couple years ago, um, Pamela at Pamela's Adoring Crochet, she was doing like the towel toppers every month and she was like gifting them to people. And um, I was like, ever since I seen that, I've always wanted to do it. I mean, they look like they would be like extremely hard because they're just so beautiful. And Sheila has made some beautiful towel toppers here. She also made this coaster set. And I just love homemade coasters. I think that they're the best. I like to use coasters, um, especially like the homemade cotton ones 
because a lot of my cups, like this one, they sway it, and then all of that water gets on your stuff, but with those um, cotton ones, you would think that it would just like soak all the way through, but it doesn't. It's just on that top layer of the, the thing, and the bottom layer is dry, and I just love them. And here is another thing that Sheila made. It is a jar cozy, and this is for her iced tea. And now I love me some iced tea too. And this is um, this is just like the greatest idea ever, Sheila. Um, it's like a coaster for your jar, and I bet like keeping that on there will um, help insulate it and keep it colder longer too. So that's a very good idea, Sheila. So thank you so much, Sheila, for sharing your projects with us this week. There's some super cute ones. And I really, really, really love that jar cozy. That's such a great idea. Okay, so Teresa made this beautiful Christmas snow. I just love his hat. I just love his hat. I love his hat. Look how cute it is. Now, she told me that um, she... Um, brushed out his um, beard and used a flat iron like that you iron your hair with and and made it like silkier so I had like heard like tales of doing that before but never really like looked into it but hers turned out so cute and she said that she even thought that it would melt the, the yarn but it didn't so hers turned out so cute that I'm gonna have to look into getting me a flat iron. I used to have one many moons ago, but I tossed it. Um, look into getting one and trying this method out. So thank you, Teresa, for letting me know all about this method. And I love your cute Christmas time. So thank you for sharing that with us, Teresa. And lastly, we have Manga Mama, and she has got some projects that she's been working on, and she's got them all finished up. The first one is this cute little pink wheel, this pink and white wheel, and um, she said that she used Bernat blanket yarn on it, and it is a pattern. It's a YouTube tutorial by Knit Grit. Knit Grit. I'll write it up there because I know I got an accent, and sometimes can't understand what I'm saying. Um, it's, it's really cute. I love little whales like that and the little octopine stuff. And, um, she made this toddler dress and it is a bag o' day, um, pattern. So, um, you'll be able to find that on here and it has a little hat. You see the little hat there too? She said that she used a Caron cotton cake for that. I think it's just so cute. And now one of my favorite things that she made is this green market bag and she made it with um, Bernat Handicrafter yarn and she said that she got the pattern it was a free pattern that was hanging on the wall of her local um, yarn store but I just love these uh, market totes for like when you go to the grocery and you're getting your produce now I know like when you go up to the the check out um i generally like take my produce out of the bag because it will add some weight on those ones that need to be weighed and stuff but it saves from having to use those plastic bags and when you like take your produce home and like if you're like me i sometimes forget to put stuff up if it sits in that plastic bag it will start to ruin and like it will you know ripen faster and you know, you lose a little bit of time with it. Whereas if it's in these market totes made out of cotton yarn, it's breathable and the cotton is natural fabric, like a natural fiber. And um, it doesn't speed up the ripening process, if that makes sense. So there has been a few times where I forget to take my produce bags in. I call them produce bags now. And I, I still don't use the the plastic bags and I'll just toss it in there but and it's like if you get any of the produce that's out of the like cooler where they missed it down on there um like you put it in your your bag your market tote or produce bag and so what it doesn't feel gross when you go to get it out whereas those plastic bags 
feel like wet and slimy. It's just gross feeling. So I really love market totes and I really like this pattern of the market tote. It's very cute. I like it a lot. So thank you, Manga Mama, for showing us all of your wonderful creations that you've been working on. And thank you to Sheila and Teresa as well. If anybody out there wants to share with the rest of us what you guys have been working on, it doesn't have to be a finished project. It can be like what you're just working on. Um, you can just email me down below. My email is down there. And if you uh, just want to share it with me and don't want me to show it off, please let me know and I won't show it off. But otherwise, I know that a lot of people really like the show and tell section and I really like it too. It's one of my favorite parts. So, yay! So, send me what you guys have been working on. I would love to see it. Okay, so all we have left to do is to pick a winner for the August Gnome Bundle giveaway. And right here is all of the whole big bundle that's being given away. So let's go to the... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Get the old iPhone here and get it ready to... record okay so i've already got the website pulled up okay here we go let's paste the url hopefully um, filter duplicate include replies specific text would be august um, 4 plus 9 is hopefully a 13. Not that great at math. Ooh, 53 unique comments. Okay, so let's press this start button and see who wins. Karen Foltz. Congratulations, Karen. And Karen has to say, congratulations, Wendy. The August Gnome is so cute. Awesome. So yay, Karen. So just um, send me an email. My email is down below. Um, and let me know um, your address that you want me to send it to and how you want your $10. Do you want me to put $10 down in the bag or do you want me to PayPal you $10? So you let me know, Karen, and I will get that out in the mail to you. So yay, that's so exciting. I love it. Okay, now let me figure out how to stop this screen recording. It's like so different from like my phone to this old phone, like the way you swipe things is all different. Okay guys, so I'm gonna get off of here and go and make me some dinner. I'm a little bit hungry. And I will talk to you guys next week. Um, have a, well, in the next video, because I do, fingers crossed, hopefully we'll get a, um, mm, I can't even think of the name of it right now, um, a Hooked on Murder. I get a new Hooked on Murder um, out this week. I've been busy with the fair and then my nephew and haven't had a chance to sit down and be like, be able to film one. So yeah, well, I will let you guys go. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Stay safe and stay happy. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.